You're listening to PBS Reno Arts. I'm Rebecca Cronin. And I'm Dave Santina. Today's guest on the program, we have Joe Atak. He's the executive director of Lake Tahoe Shakespeare Festival. Welcome, Joe. Hello. Thank you for having me. Well, thanks for coming down. It's uh, all the way down from Incline Village. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Such a slog. <laughs> no, it's not too bad. Well, I live in Reno, so. <laughs> oh, very good. So that's good. Piece of cake. Exactly. Uh, excited for this year's festival. So tell us, what is the Lake Tahoe Shakespeare Festival for people who may not know? Uh, I'd love to tell you about it. So uh, <laughs> so Lake Tahoe Shakespeare Festival, we are the largest producing outdoor theater in the state of Nevada. And we are right on the shore of Lake Tahoe. Our theater is in Lake Tahoe, Nevada State Park, which is actually Sand Harbor State Park. And it's undoubtedly one of the most beautiful locations you could mm-hmm. put a theater in the world. And uh, one of the cool things about us is that we're one of the only equity union houses in the whole state, because there's not a lot of equity theater in the whole state of Nevada. Yeah. Well, for those of us who are not versed, well-versed, can you explain a little bit about what that means? Yeah, that means that the actors that we bring in each season are union you know, members of the acting union. So they're so we, professionals, number pro- one. Professionals, number one. And we're also paying them, you know, a decent living, right. livable wage. Um, and it means they get pension and health care and all those great things. You know, so it's pretty unique in our, in our state because we don't have a lot of that kind of work in, in the state of Nevada. That's true. Yeah. The right to work state mm-hmm. for, in every other facet. So it's, yeah. it's special. but. And it's kind of surprising we don't have a lot of union theater in the state, really, especially because we're mm-hmm. such an entertainment-driven state. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. So it's sort of unusual, but you know. So we're really proud of the of the work that we do. And uh, another unique thing about us is that we um, are part of a strategic producing alliance. So we have two sister companies across the country: one in Idaho, and Ooh. in Boise, the okay. Idaho Shakespeare Festival. And then one in Cleveland, Ohio, called Great Lakes Theater. And it's almost like we're one company uh, run across the country, Mm -hmm. but actually we're three separate companies all working together. It's really cool. So how do you, how do you work together? Do you, do you share resources? Do you share people? How does it work? Uh, We do both of those things. So really the idea, uh, Charles Fee, who is our producing artistic director, he's the this was his, you know, brainchild, um, and it's a genius idea. And really, the the there are a lot of Shakespeare companies across the United States, or every state virtually has a, at least one Shakespeare company. And in a way, we're all producing the same kind of work, and we're sort of duplicating it for our communities. Well, what this model allows us to do is to share the resources to create better art to give artists better contracts, longer contracts, the ability to perform perhaps in th- in all three companies mm-hmm. across the year. So it's really cool. It's really and cool. It saves us all money, but it also allows us to elevate the work that we do. Well, are, are um, actors usually pretty excited about the notion of coming to Tahoe to perform? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's great. And having been an actor on the stage there for many years, it's fantastic. I mean, there's no better place really to be performing. You, you're you know, you're in nature, which is really what Shakespeare's work was kind of intended for that environment. You know, his mm-hmm. his a lot of his plays were performed at, in an outdoor theater. So it's just something magical about Shakespeare in the open air, you know. Yeah, I had not thought about that. But yeah, that makes sense. You know, I've been to Oregon Shakespeare Festival mm-hmm. and that's they have open air performance yep. venues as well. Um, but those are you know, built around yes. with a, with no with no roof. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're in a place that is, it is as natural an environment I think as you can reasonably expect, and mm-hmm. still have a stage and wings yeah. and you know mm-hmm. a seating and everything. Mm-hmm. But uh, for for people who've just gone up to Sand Harbor for the day during the summer to go to the beach and take a walk, they've probably found the stage. You know, <laughs> at, when it's mm-hmm. when it's dark essentially. You know, and and. Wondered, maybe wondered what that was, but I, I used to, I always liked taking that walk and just seeing this is where the Shakespeare Festival is. This is, this place is special. Yeah, it's, the venue is, is stunning and we're so lucky to have the, a great relationship with Nevada State Parks who 
host, you know, our, our host essentially keeping the park in such amazing condition year round. It's got that beautiful sandy beach mm. and the, those clear, gorgeous, what is it, 98.98% <laughs> pure. It's 0.2% off drinking water. Right. It's crazy. Uh, you know, and and let's not let's not pretend like we haven't all had some of that and drank some of that water anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, usually by accident. Intentional. <laughs> yeah. Usually by accident. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, we um, we each season, our season starts at the end of June and runs through almost to the end of August. Um, this year, our season runs until August 25th. We have a Shakespeare play and a non-Shakespeare play performing in repertory, which means they, they trade off um, usually two or three nights of one and then another. And so we change sets and we change, com- you know, acting teams. I have been a number of times to performances, and it is unlike any other place. As we as we said, I'm repeating myself. I'm repeating you. But one of the things that I've always noticed is when the sun sets, mm-hmm. the stage, the activity on the stage is in direct competition with this show that's happening on the side of the hill. The, the side of the mountains next to you is this incredible color and this sunset. Yep. And I always have wondered if on stage anyone's ever tempted to turn and, <laughs> and look and, and break a little bit? Uh, I wouldn't say break, but it's definitely something you're aware of, you know? Incorporate it. Yeah. And so I, there's also those full moon nights when the moon comes up over the back of the mountains and illuminates. What's really strange is that on those nights, there's no, you know, when you have a blackout when the, all of the lights go out, there's, there is none. Because the moon will fully illuminate the stage. Right. Wow. So, so, yeah. <laughs> so people can't really creep hope, in and out. Yeah, you got to hope if your character died, you just got to very, <laughs> very sneakily, surreptitiously <laughs> creep off, you know, in full moonlight lighting. Just roll away. <laughs> yeah. It is spectacular, though. I do love it. Um, so this year, I, I assume that this is it, like other years that I've been aware of where you, you do a Shakespeare performance, mm-hmm. but you also do a second uh, non Shakespeare play, correct? Correct. So, what's what's on doc on deck for this season? So, uh, w- our first show that we open is actually our non Shakespeare this year. It's Always Patsy, which is a musical tribute to the country icon Patsy Cline, and it's actually a, a story based on um, the letters between her and, and a fan. So it's, it has mm-hmm. only two characters in it, and Patsy and her band. We have the full, you know, oh. six, I think it's a six-piece band mm-hmm. uh, behind her. Um, wow, that, was, that sounds impressive already. Yeah, it's, we, just, oh, we just closed it in our sister company in Cleveland, and it's getting raves. It's, mm-hmm. it's a fantastic show. Mm-hmm. It was created by a, a company in uh, the state of Texas called Stages. It's a really great show. And then our Shakespeare this year is The Merry Wives of Windsor. Uh. If you've never seen The Merry Wives of Windsor, it's really, really fun uh, play. Allegedly, um, or it's believed to have been written specifically for Elizabeth I because it's all centered around one character called Falstaff, mm. Sir John Falstaff, who is a famous character from the history plays. And he's like a lovable rogue kind of a drinker and a, a cad, ah. a bounder, a cheat. And he's come up with this plot where he's going to try and seduce and then, you know, essentially blackmail these two married women. But what he doesn't realize is that the two women he's chosen are actually friends. Ah. So he sends them the same letter. And they, <laughs> they're like comparing notes. And of course, he gets a terrible comeuppance, you know. And so it's all about love and marriage. And also it's, a you know, about dastardly behavior yeah, and how it can, how it gets called out. It's really fun. Sounds it's like really fun. fun. Yeah. So yeah. when you came to Shakespeare um, Festival, you were you came as an actor? Yeah, well, yeah, it's a so a long a long story. But I so as some people listening or you know, I'm sorry if you have to look at me on YouTube. <laughs> uh, but uh, stop. But uh, uh, I'm English. I have this weird English American hybrid accent now. I was recently in England and everyone says I sound like I'm American. Oh, funny. And no. then when I'm here, everyone says I sound English. So Can't there win. we go. This is my talking to Americans accent <laughs> because I'm, actually, I'm, from, uh, I'm from Yorkshire. So 
when I go home, especially if I've been in the pub, my accent gets really thick, uh -huh. re gets thick right quick, right back. quick. Uh, and uh, so, um, yeah, this helps me be a little bit more understood, I think. Um, it's sort of developed over time just naturally. But um, yeah, so I came out to the US to work for a company called Nevada Shakespeare Company, which isn't really around anymore. There is a Nevada Shakespeare Festival now in Las Vegas, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, but a different company. And I came out to work for Nevada Shakespeare Company, and we at Nevada Shakespeare Company produced the educational programming for Lake Tahoe Shakespeare Festival. Okay. Because back then, there was no company, uh, there was no acting company, and there were no education staff or artistic staff. The acting company was brought in from Foothill Theatre Company in okay. Nevada City. Right. Mm -hmm. And it was only when Foothill started to go out of business in 2007, 2008, okay. that, that uh, Shakespeare Festival decided to launch its own company. Mm -hmm. I have a, a memory of you from a, an Artifacts episode that we did a few years ago about mm -hmm. the education work that you were doing at the time. So anyone listening or watching, if it's YouTube, uh, <laughs> go back to pbsreno.org and find that story and watch <laughs> Joe talk about all the great work that they were doing. It's, mm -hmm. it's a... Uh, it, was, it was really a, a good a good uh, introduction to the kinds of things that are happening that uh, that are not just performing plays, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, we have our main stage plays, but our education our educational outreach program is a huge part of what we do and something we really care about and and want to continue to grow and develop. So I was the education director. I became education director in two thousand and eleven. Mm -hmm. And so I only just became the executive director uh, in this year, in uh, February. Right. Newly yeah. minted. Yes. Newly minted, fresh off the press. You still Congrats. have that new executive director smell. <laughs> I know. And smile. I, know. <laughs> I, I wonder how long it'll last. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I served as an education director for quite a long time, and we have still uh, education program, the same education programs running. So our education programs are called the DG Menchetti Educational Outreach Programs, and they're named after um, Gino Menchetti, uh, who uh, sadly passed away in 2020. And um, we have two programs. We have one that runs in school all year, and that's called Interact. Okay. And it's like an in-school workshop residency program. We send uh, two teaching artists into the classroom and they spend a whole week or more. Wow. So sometimes we spend two weeks at a school, sometimes we spend three weeks at a school and we'll work intensely with them on in every English class or in a drama class. And it's not like a cookie cutter program, so it's not the same each week. It's mm. slightly different. Depends what the school is after, what okay. the teacher is interested in doing. We do everything from like stage combat with some kids. Oh, how fun would that be? Really, you know, slightly more, um, you know, traditional English classes where we'll teach specific Shakespeare. So we might do mm -hmm. a Julius Caesar and work on the rhetorical triangle, you oh, know, okay. for an afternoon, <laughs> you know. So uh, it's a really great program. And we work with about four to 5,000 students a year around, wow. around the region, all the way around the Tahoe Basin, all around Reno, a little further afield. Nice. Uh, yeah. Well, and now how nice to see that kind of art education happening around here because that's you know it, that's not happening without you uh, yeah, i mean uh, yeah that I particular mean, that particular thing that we have expertise in that particular area we have expertise in and you know uh, the great thing about it too is that it connects to our other program which is our young shakespeare and what that is is trying to recreate the experience of our main stage program for young people mm -hmm but also providing them with a training opportunity. So half of that, we create an hour long adaptation of a Shakespeare play. And then half of the cast are professional actors from Reno who we pay, you know, a weekly salary okay. for the four weeks. And then half of the cast are local high school students. And they tour the show around the region together. And the main, the, you know, the adult actors, they mentor the, the student actors. They, and each of the, you know, the adults has might have a special skill. So sometimes we've had someone who's a voice teacher or we've had someone who's a really great musical theater or singer or stage combat or mm. something. And they'll they'll help the students with different aspects of the production as well as the director helping them. It's a great experience for him. Yeah. And so this year it's 
it's it's a really big year for us because we're doing 20 performances in two weeks. Oh my gosh. We're doing all of the Washoe County libraries. We're going to Fallon, Fernley, mm. Yarrington, Minden, wow. South Lake Tahoe. Yeah, it's a lot of show. <laughs> they do a lot of shows in in just two weeks. So, and these all these are all uh, tremendous programs. You. As executive director, I imagine that part of your job is to raise money to make this possible. Correct? Mm -hmm. What? So that's that's a it's a bit daunting. Yeah, yeah. I think um, we we live in a an eco an arts ecosystem in the United States is particularly challenging. Um, but you know, both your weakness and your is also your strength, and vice versa. So. Um, we don't have a lot of government provided funding in th and, and mm -hmm. I will say this also in the state of Nevada, our, our funding, although we're super grateful for the amazing support of the Nevada arts council and they have amazing staff and really supportive programming, mm -hmm. but compared to other states, our funding is quite low. Mm -hmm. You know, if we compared the amount of funding, for example, that you would get in Ohio at our Ohio theater from mm. the state of Ohio wow. to what we receive, I mean, it's, it's big difference. Oh, huge. It's le less than half. We get less than half wow. in two years than they get in one year oh from the state. Mm -hmm. That's you know. it's unfortunate. That's a challenge for you then to, 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 to provide the service, to provide the, the product that you do. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not really just the arts, you know, there's also a lack of, you know, you could say in education too, like our education programs that are at our sister company in Cleveland receive much more funding from the schools also directly because the schools are also have more funding in, mm -hmm. in Ohio. So, you know, but we also, we also find strength in that because we have to adapt and we have to find new ways of working and we have to be efficient and we have to be clever and we have to be innovative. Mm -hmm. Well, and it, yeah. So you find, you find new strength that you didn't know you had. Yeah, exactly. And, and also I think it helps it helps us to try and connect with our community. You know, it, it sort of forces our hand a little bit to say, you know, we're not just here for ourselves, but we're also here for you as well. And we all have to work together to make these arts programs and thing, you know, things for each other. Right. You mm -hmm. know, because ultimately that's, you know, the, the programs we make are for our communities, you know. So Interact is for a community and Young Shakespeare. The cool thing about, you know, Young Shakespeare and Interact for me, it, well, it also makes me feel incredibly old. Is that uh, you really feel the um, you really feel the impact of it even years later? I was having this meeting. A, a lot, this is a weird an anecdote, maybe, but I was having a, a meeting with some uh, a, a group, Washoe Education Alliance, and we were talking about mm -hmm. booking uh, that we provide programming in, in some of the schools that they work with, and we were in the middle of a meeting and some somebody came up to me completely randomly and said tap and said excuse me i hope i'm not interrupting but you taught me in third grade <laughs> and this he was about 30 years old oh wow <laughs> and i was like hi <laughs> <laughs> and i was like I, was, I said i promise i didn't i didn't plan this you know i, I it was just a bit of free free impact advertising yeah. but you know we the one of the really interesting things that's happened over the years is so students who do interact will often come and do, have the opportunity to come and do Young Shakespeare with us because we'll meet them and they'll come and audition. So Jayton Newbery, who is our te one of our teaching artists, I met Jayton when he was 14 or 15 at Reno High School. Oh, wow. And at the time, he was a young, skinny, skinny kid. With he had long, like emo hair. Right. Of I course. tease him about it all the time. He had like a little <laughs> emo hair and was very like um, Jaden. Yeah. Um, he was a really lovely kid. Um, he, I met him when we were doing Interact, and then he came and did Young Shakespeare, and then you know wow. went to UNR, stayed in contact because I, you know, was the artistic director at another theater here in Reno right. for a while, um, and. Um, 
you know, now he's a teaching artist for us. So he's wow. like, he's done all three. He's been a student in both of the yeah. things and he's now teaches it, you know. So uh, and he performs as one of the adults in Young Shakespeare. Now he's a, he's graduated from U9. Yeah. All that's left is to uh, is to perform one of the one of the Shakespeare plays, the, right. the, the the standard plays that come up and be and then you've got the complete cycle. Right. And it, it happens, you know, um, we've had. Over the years, we've had somebody go through all of that process and then go away completely, not see them for years, and they come back and they're an actor in the main stage, you know. That's incredible. Yeah, it's great. Ah, it must feel so gratifying. Yeah, it is. It's it's really great. So how do how do young people who are interested get involved? Is there a way for them to, to engage with this on their own? Um, yeah, so for our Young Shakespeare program, relatively soon we're going to do some auditions and we'll they'll be kind of open to any young people and we'll advertise those on our website and put them out to the schools as well mostly we do it through the schools because it's easier that way mm -hmm. okay you know um because it's it's also a big commitment and you know all those things so yeah makes sense yeah for this year's festival what should people um know or are there any particular um pieces of the festival that you want people to know about? There's loads of things. I love talking about the festival. So yeah. Um, so <laughs> I'm the one of the things that I think people don't know, aside from a lot of people don't know about our education program. Right. So mm -hmm. Young Shakespeare, I, I'll also say this, it's completely free to attend when you come to the performances. None of them, you don't have to pay anything to come to any of them. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to reserve, you can just come. So that's really cool. So a lot of people that's their first experience of both theatre and of Shakespeare, which is really great. Um, but beyond what we do with Shakespeare and our musical, we also work with partner organizations. So Sierra Nevada Ballet are going to be doing Sleeping Beauty mm -hmm. uh, on our stage. Oh, very nice. Yeah, and that's um, July 29th. Uh, Reno Philharmonic is, has two concerts. They're going to be doing a uh, country music concert like songs of nashville which oh, is super cool that'll be really fun yeah and then they're doing uh the second show that they're doing is the music of tina turner which is again really fun i love it mm -hmm. and reno jazz orchestra has two performances on the stage as well they're doing um they're doing what is that they're doing <laughs> so they're doing fuego that's right okay so they have a, we have so much going on so they're doing uh fuego which is salsa and latin jazz mm -hmm. nice. oh fun yeah, and then I they're also, it. they have Camille Thurman coming and performing with them, who's a, I believe, a really talented, I know, they're a talented jazz, jazz saxophonist. Mm -hmm. Saxophonist. Is that how you say it? I'm trying to say it. <laughs> I just got to put my teeth in. <laughs> um, and then, you know, we're, we also have concerts that we uh, self-produce as well. So we've got okay. the famous jazz saxophonist Boney James oh fun is coming um, and performing you're, there. you're selling me I'm ready to come up there yeah <laughs> and so uh, that's uh, our Prim Prager jazz night which is always a really great night we always bring in a really great jazz artist for that night and then we have Tapestry which is the music of Carol King uh, we have The Who Show uh, we have Under the Street Lamp which uh, I, I not I'm not sure if it was in the Reno PBS but they had a feature about them on PBS, and they were featured in a couple of huh. programs in PBS, I know, in Ohio. Mm -hmm. Well, I wonder if perhaps we've we've uh, shared a story about them that maybe was shared with us. Mm -hmm. Our Artifact series yeah. shares stories around the country, and we receive stories from around the country, and we so, sort of partner with other stations in the same way maybe you're sharing sharing work with the Idaho and Ohio. But, mm, yeah. um, I will have to check now and make sure that uh, we, if we have that available, that we put that in an Artifacts episode because I'd love to see it. Yeah, yeah and they're super talented. So it's a, a four amazing singers and a band, and they cover a whole, a wide, you know, a pretty good range of like 60s, 70s, 50s and 60s, 70s kind of era of music. They're really, really talented guys. And yeah. the team. The one thing beyond all of these great performances to think about is for all of them that are up on your stage, mm -hmm. you're in that environment that we've yeah. talked about. It's yep. incredible. And we didn't even talk about the the nearby restaurant. You know, you've got food and, and drinks. Kitchen, yeah. Shakespeare's Kitchen, is that the name? Yep. <laughs> yeah, run by uh, the Brims. The Brim fam family have been running Shakespeare's Kitchen for like 27 years. Oh, wow. I didn't yeah. realize it was a family-run operation. Yeah, Marnie and Andy... 
Brim, fantastic people who've worked with us for a really, really long time. I actually worked in Shakespeare's Kitchen a really long time. Oh, ago. really? Yeah, I was. A, we talking about waiting, and you never got to be a waiter. You yeah. said earlier. So That's if, right. If you're feeling, if you're feeling the itch, <laughs> I, let I, me know. I, I know you, Marnie and Brim. You've got an opening. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I might get my up. chance. Yeah. Yep. I was never. I was never a waiter. I was only a busboy. So this maybe this is my chance. Chance, chance like, finally step up. Sounds like the name of your book, Dave. This never an, a waiter. <laughs> That's right. If I ever had an autobiography, it's never, coming. never a waiter. But it's a, Shakespeare's Kitchen is great because you can, um, you if you're in the premium section, you can order from your seat, which is nice. really cool feature for the folks down there. Uh, uh, but you know, you can also if you if you don't feel like you know ordering food there, you can bring a picnic with you. Mm-hmm. I uh, loads of folks do. That. I got to say, great. Rebecca, mm-hmm. have you been to a show up at up at uh, the Santa Harbor yet. yet? Okay, nope. You have to go this year because I can attest to this. I have been <laughs> I've been a picnicker, mm-hmm. which is fantastic. But there, it, you know, I, you, it is you know the first sort of the first class treatment. If you want to go into the, into the into the seats where you can get delivery, mm-hmm. it feels pretty cool to be sitting in this environment and have somebody bring your dinner to you yeah. and <laughs> just let you sit there like Very you know fancy. like a king and a Shakespeare there you play. Go. There you go. And being treated. Um, I did want to ask you a question about the the performance of a Shakespeare play because mm-hmm. obviously they've been performed for many many years. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you how do you do a fresh version? How do you approach putting on a play that by you know by all accounts is well known already? Mm-hmm. You know you you had zero qualms just now about describing the play to us to, right. pretty much yeah. to the end because it's not about Right. Uh, spoilers. Right. It's more it, there. There are other factors involved, and so I'm always yeah. curious about how do you do it and do it in a way that feels fresh. Well, I think you know a lot of that starts with the artistic impulse of the director and the and the production team and how they envisage the story. But fundamentally, it's about connecting it connecting with us on a human level, which is what all theater is about, you know, and why we still, you know, after thousands of years, all want to congregate in these spaces together. Mm -hmm. You know, the magic of live performance, whether it's music, ballet, tap, you know, Shakespeare, whatever it is, is that we're coming together to experience it all in that one moment. Mm -hmm. That's the difference between recorded media and live media. And, and so, being a part of that that experience, you are co-creating it just by being in the space because mm-hmm. every audience is different and every audience reaction is different. Audience, a lot of a lot of audiences don't realize there's so many communal things that happen to you as part of that process. You're very aware of it in a music concert if you're jumping up and down or something right. like that, you right. know, and enjoying live music, which I, I love live music. But, you know, one of the things that's really cool about live theater is that people's heartbeats will synchronize while they're sat in a dark space. Everybody's heartbeats will naturally start to hit the same rhythm. And people don't realize that kind of thing of how connected we all are when we're in a space like that. And so one of the other things is, and I I talk to students about this all the time, is that when you, um, when you walk into a room in a house, if someone's just had an argument, like a blazing row, Mm. like a, you know, the, the paint's been peeling off the walls, you know, <laughs> because of the language in this room. And if they're silent and you walk in, you can feel it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Because humans, when we emit emotion, we, we're we sending out, you know, vibrations and, and it sounds very, you know, hippie-ish. <laughs> but we, we, you know, we're sending out material into the atmosphere. I think it's why people think theaters are haunted because you leave impressions. Well, when you're in a space with an audience, they're feeling the, those actual emotions in real time. Mm-hmm. And that's the slight difference between, rec- you know, the ex- well, not the slight difference, but the big difference between recorded media and live art. So yeah. your presence in the room and the way you respond to it changes the material. And it changes the way everybody else experiences the material. That's mm-hmm. so why you can go and see the same play at different points in a run and have a different experience. Yeah, you won't ever have the same play twice. No, it'll be it'll be slightly different each time, and that's mm-hmm. the beauty of it that you are part of that process. Must make it fun, also to perform, knowing yeah. that it's not 
even though you know every step, every word, mm -hmm. you're still not performing by rote because that night's ambiance will be different from the night before. Completely, completely. And, you know, your scene partners will respond differently to the environment and what, you know, things change. Sometimes the best things that happen are the things that don't go quite according to plan, mm -hmm. um, you know. And those are some of the fun stories that we get to tell each other as actors when something goes horribly wrong or sometimes horribly right, right. Uh, mm -hmm. depending on the, on the experience. But, you know, it's, it's really why when we're talking with young people, especially, you know, in schools or after school programs or in whatever it is, that it's really important to emphasize the difference between curating your own experience in your living room, which you can do now. Right. You know, you can get any kind of content you want at your fingertips. You can watch yeah. any kind of material. Right. It's the difference between that experience and being part of the experience, you know, and that's what's cool about it. I agree. Okay. I agree. But before we run out of time, I want to mm -hmm. ask you to tell us, anyone listening, watching, how to go about getting getting a seat getting information or, you know, more information or, or tickets to the upcoming shows. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the, your best your best protocol and uh, most people's protocol is to go to our website, which is www.laketahoshakespeare.com. And there you can find all the information you need. You can call us if you like, uh, or you can uh, book your tickets online. You can choose your seat. You can choose your performance. You can look at the calendar. You can see pictures. There's also, if uh, you need accessibility, if, if you are, for example, hard of hearing, we have assisted hearing devices and those kind of things. We also have ASL performances for our two main wow. stage shows as well. Oh, nice. So you can find all of that information. And the other thing I would say, if you're coming for the first time, is definitely take a look at the information on the venue because it is a unique space. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it can get cold at night. Oh, so yes. There's all yep. kinds of information. There's pictures of the seats. There's pictures of the venue. Yeah. You can check out all the cool stuff. So that's the best place to go. It I, sounds like you guys have made the festival very, very accessible. So there's no way someone can say, no, I can't go. Because at the end of the day, you're trying to get out the craft and the art of Shakespeare and bring it to a modern, a modern audience. Yeah. You know, and, and I think... You know, some of our tickets are definitely pricier. Like if you want to sit in the front and be in the front row, it can be for some people that might be, uh, you know, an expensive date night. True. But there's also a ticket for, you know, 20 something bucks. You know, right. you can sit in the back and actually some of the best experiences can be had there because you can see the whole mm -hmm. lake, mm -hmm. the stage. So I, I, bad seat. I can vouch for that. The <laughs> higher up you sit, you put out, put a towel down and sit mm -hmm. on the sand and you get that view of the sunset and right. and the moon coming up that is by itself a show. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. incredible. Yeah. It's incredible. So I'm saying this to while I'm looking at Rebecca to encourage you to this year, make this year the one where you go because yeah, you will be so job. happy. Yeah, you will you will love it. You will love it. Yeah. It's it's a great date night. It's a great family night too because the shows are you know perfectly good for for young people as well. Oh, yeah. And it's, yeah. you know, it's incredible how well you see kids reacting mm -hmm. to a performance where they may not even understand exactly what is being said, but they can tell what's happening. Yeah. And they have a great time. I have seen this with my own eyes. I'd, uh, I'd uh, bet that William Shakespeare himself would approve of the whole scene and the whole organization. Uh, yeah, the same? I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> I think he'd want to cut, though. He might, yeah. yeah. I think, yeah. We'll just, oh, yeah. yeah. Really don't don't tell him we're doing it. Don't tell yeah. him. Yeah. Well, don't tell him it's happening. Secret. Uh, before we go, uh, we also are encouraging people to uh, get in touch with us. Questions, suggestions, tell us, you know, stories that you'd like to pursue. People we should talk to. Uh, we want to talk about anything arts related in this community, and so this mm -hmm. is an opportunity. Bex, how do people do that? That's right. Um, if you have an idea, a uh, recommendation, or if you just want to send us a message about episodes you've listened or listened to or watched, just wa uh, email us at podcasts at pbsreno.org. Podcasts at pbsreno.org, and mm -hmm. uh, we'd love to hear from you. Joe, thank you for the time today. Yeah, thank you so much for having Thanks, me. Joe. It's been really fun. I appreciate it. So uh, until uh, the next PBS Reno Arts Podcast, I'm Dave Santina. And I'm Rebecca Cronin. And we'll talk to you later. Mm -hmm.